guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a recommendation video of a full entire page of historical romances where I'm sharing historical romances for your favorite book tropes. So over a month ago on Instagram, I did ask for tropes you guys wanted for historical romances, and so I have a whole list here. I had a lot of repeated ones and ones that I still couldn't find a recommendation for, so I definitely have to read more from them, but I will go ahead and get to my 20 plus list of romance recommendations. Some of these do overlap with the recent video I did of my favorite romances I've been loving lately. I will link that video down below. I do have a couple that are the same on there, but a lot that are from the last two years that I've been reading romances. This is coming out on the first day of the Historical Romance Readathon, which I'm super excited about. If you have not heard about that readathon, check out my Instagram. It's saved in my highlights. I'm hosting with Lisa and Lacey. We're super excited to read historical romances all week, so if you need a little bit of help on your TBR, I'm gonna get through my recommendations. The first one is fake dating, and this is different because it's not marriage of convenience or getting married for like fake reasons. It's actually they are pretending to court and so my most favorite one recently is The Lady Tempts and Air by Harper St. George. This one they both need to act like they are about to get married because of different circumstances so they actually spend a lot of time together because she is friends with his sister and the sister ran off to Scotland on her own in book two so I do recommend reading these in order though it's not like absolutely necessary because I really did love book two as well but they spent time together and they haven't been able to stop thinking about each other nothing happened between them but they were like now that they're calm and like okay with the sister they're like hmm I liked you. So they both need to marry for specific reasons or like act like they are. She's actually a widow but she has this cause for helping single mothers and she needs donations in order to be taken seriously. She needs to be in a relationship even though she's already been married once. She is unable to have children so they do discuss that in here so make sure you know that going in if that's a sensitive subject for you but the hero is also being forced by his father to marry or else something's gonna happen to the company that the father runs they are very wealthy and so they end up fake courting by growing really close and really liking each other and then falling in love obviously but she does not want to have him marry her because he is the only son in their family and he needs heirs and um she can't provide that for him so she feels like she's not good enough for him but such a good romance i'm obsessed with this author book one was just okay but like books two and three five star rates for me okay so the next one is someone asks them when they had to help each other find a spouse now i have some favorite ones like the duchess hunt by lorraine heath but i'm not going to recommend that i talk about it all the time i'm going to recommend dare to be a Duchess by Sapna Bog. There's two books in the series. So some people did ask for BIPOC recommendations and in this book the heroine is half Indian and half British. And so what happens is she was taken in by a uncle figure and because her mother, I think both of her parents actually passed away. The uncle's her guardian now and it's actually the uncle of her best friend and it's her best friend's brother who she falls in love with and so I think I actually some people ask for best friend's brother but I might have I also have a different one for that one but this is also best friend's brother trope and so in the beginning she attends a very scandalous ball with her best friend who's trying to meet up with a lover of hers and so the brother shows up and he's like what are you guys doing here you can't do this and so then she ends up kissing him to distract him and he is like whoa what was that but then he realizes it was a distraction and gets so angry but then he is like fine you guys have six months to find a husband and if you don't find one I'm gonna get one for you and so he is on the hunt to find them suitable husbands but she doesn't want that she wants to marry for love and she feels like society is well she doesn't feel like it they actually really are very racist towards her for because of her heritage because she is half Indian they don't like that and so a lot of people are really rude to her in society and she's like I can't marry someone in society because they do not respect me and I'm not gonna marry someone like that and then her and the brother end up falling in love instead and it's such a good romance I really liked it I do have book two for a different prompt but Sapna Boggs honestly an author I'm super excited to read more from and explore more of her backlist because this one was so good. A recommendation a lot of people wanted was for friends to lovers and I have such a hard time with this because there's not a lot of friends to lovers romances out there that are historicals that I have read. I have read a couple childhood friends to lovers. This one is She Tempts the Duke by Lorraine Heath. This one is actually a childhood friends to lovers and they were childhood friends when there were three brothers. I think two of them are twins and their father dies and their uncle wants to take over the dukedom from them so they know that their uncle's going to kill them next. She helps them escape and so they all leave. She promises to meet up again with him somewhere and they return in the middle of a ball. She is currently being courted by someone else and he is there to take the dukedom and his uncle has already like kind of taken over and and is angry when they return but they are all older and very hardened and I recommend another book in this series for a dark romance they are a lot darker because they went through a lot of bad things they all separated I don't remember 
I think he went into the military, the first one, and then the second one was in, uh, like, the seas, like he was a ship captain, and the third one ended up being a child laborer in like factories and stuff, and his story is really sad. His is the one I'm going to recommend later, but he ends up showing up and they reconnect, and so they were best friends as children, so I really love that whole aspect. I know Stacey Reed's new book has this trope where they're childhood best friends or like childhood sweethearts, and I love that trope so much, so I definitely want to read that for the historical romance readathon, but this one I definitely recommend if there are we're super close as children, and then they reconnect later on. The next one, I knew immediately what I wanted to recommend for this. So, if someone asked for a bookshop owner or a bookish heroine, I had to go with Love is a Rogue. I love this book so much. Lenora Bell is an author I really love and I wish more people read from. So, in this one, she inherits a bookshop from, I think, an aunt or something, and it's very not in good condition. It's crumbling down, a lot of things are ruined, but there's a section of it that has a very explicit text and she's kind of scandalized, but the hero is actually a construction worker. He was working construction on her home and she was like spying on him and her glasses drop out the window and hit him and he climbs up the window to return her glasses to her. She hires him to help renovate the bookstore and it's a social class difference romance. The hero watched his own family have a social class difference romance, so he is like, I don't want that to happen my family that was so hard watching his mother go through that but they end up falling in love anyways and it's so good and it's such a fun way that this is explored with the whole bookshop aspect and he makes her bookshelf she's very bookish she's definitely a wallflower it's a wallflower and rogues series so highly recommend checking this one out especially if you want a bookish heroine then we have a marriage of convenience and i'm going to recommend the most recent one i read which is tempt me at twilight by lisa Claypus. i really love this book because the hero pretty much makes them get married so the heroine it's part of the Hathaway series. It's book three. The heroine is with her family. They're staying at this hotel and she finds a secret passage in the hotel and stumbles across this man. He's actually the owner of the hotel and he's the hero and he is like, I want you. And he's warned her. He literally says, like, I'm the villain of a story. Like, I'm not a good person. But he ends up making sure that they are caught together and ruined and have to get married because he is like, I go after what I want and I want you. They have a marriage of convenience and it's so, so good. And of course, like, they're not in love when they get married. They definitely have an attraction and they are both are like, we don't, I would never love you. But they end up falling in love anyways. And I had so much fun with this one. The hero was just so interesting and I could not recommend the series enough. It's definitely my favorite of the series so far and I'm excited to read the next book because the next book's the brother's story but this is a great series as well if you want like family in each book like it's all the siblings that get their own books. Then someone asked wrong sibling. I've read a lot of these that I really love but the one I'm going to recommend is Say Yes to the Marquest by Tessa Dare. In this one the heroine's been engaged to a guy for like eight years and she is embarrassed. She's like how have we not had our wedding yet? This needs to happen. I need to get married. I've wasted all this time in my life like it's going to happen. So she tracks down his brother and she was like you need to make this wedding happen or else and I swear like when she goes to his apartment he is like sweaty and shirtless because he was like practicing his boxing because I think he's like a bare knuckle fighter or something if I remember correctly and I feel like this series by Tessa Dare like the later books are so underrated I don't hear a lot of people talking about them but she ends up falling in love with that brother so she's engaged to one brother there's no like romantic attachments it is a marriage of convenience but she falls for the other brother while she's trying to get him to get his brother to marry her. So, such a fun book. I just love Tessa Dare's writing, and I can't wait for her to have a new book out, but I really enjoyed this one. I do own this next one, but it's somewhere in my bookshelf. So, the next one's Medieval. I have not read a lot of Medieval books, but I just read A Knight in Shining Armor. I had a fun time reading this. So, the ones I recommend for my book club with historical hellions that I run with Samantha from Books with Samantha are books that are wild. So, this one's old, and it's a time travel romance, and I gave it like three and a half stars, but I would recommend reading it for the experience because the heroine is in a really bad relationship with the single dad and they go to England together and it takes place like in the 80s because it was contemporary for the time because it came out in the 80s and so she ends up being like stranded at this church and she's asking for like a knight in shining armor to come help her. Little does she know a man in literal shining armor shows up and he is like oh what am I doing here and she realizes that she's on his grave and it's his death date is like super close to when his reality is and he's like oh my gosh like why am I gonna die then and it's some like big conspiracy going on and so she thinks it's her duty to save him and so it does take a long time for them to get back into the past it's like 
50% until they go back in the past, but I had so much fun reading the past chapters because then she meets him and he doesn't remember her. And so she has to try to help him figure out this conspiracy and survive. And it's just such a fun time and really encapsulates the medieval time period, I feel like, when she does go back in time and how so many people are like living at this castle and his mother is like pretty much on the level like of a queen where they live and everything she says goes. And it's really interesting. And I had a lot of fun reading it and the romance was pretty good. So I recommend it if you want to have that experience of reading this book. Then it's Captor Captive, which is one of my favorite tropes. And for this one, I am going to recommend one that I've talked about before. It is Kidnapped by the Pirate by Kira Andrews. One hero is a pirate, and the other one is this younger man whose father is not a good person, and he's taking his son and pregnant daughter to his new, like, island that he is the mayor of or governor of or something. Like, it is somewhere where they imperialized and took it over because they're British and they take over whatever islands they want to. And so they're taking him to this new colony they have, and they get taken over by pirates, and the pirate has a vendetta against the other hero's dad because his dad is the reason why he's a pirate. He was a privateer. If you don't know, privateers were people who were like legal pirates for the crown and then the crown decided not to want to use them anymore so turn them into illegal pirates. So what happens is he was kind of ruined by the dad and he was like I want to kill him and make his life miserable. So he realizes he has a son and so he is like perfect like I can ruin this man's life. He keeps him captured in his cabins and they fall for each other because the son hate, doesn't like his father. I wouldn't say he hates his father, but he does not agree with things his father does. And he doesn't really know a lot that his father does. And so they end up falling in love and it's definitely a bit of an age gap and they had to come to an understanding. And of course the crew thinks like this is the guy that's responsible for ruining them. So they would definitely not want them to be together. It's a bit of a forbidden romance too. I really loved it. Check out Kira Andrews. I love her books so much. Then we have enemies to lovers. And so this one I'm doing like feuding families to lovers. And this one is again, one that I read for Historical Hellions. I had a fun time reading. I gave it four stars. There was a lot of differences of opinions for this book. Some people gave it two, some people gave it five. I had a fun time. It was A Gentle Feuding by Joanna Lindsay. It's also a Scottish romance. It's between two feuding clans. Our hero was like around the lands of the feuding clan and he sees this woman bathing in this pond and he is like, oh my gosh, like, I'm obsessed. And so he continuously tries to find her, gets kidnapped by the feuding clan when he tries to find her, and she's the daughter of that clan. And he's talking to her brother, and he is like, I'm supposed to be married off to one of your sisters. And he's angry about being kidnapped, so he makes up all these lies about these horrible, horrendous things he would do to her if he was married to her. The heroine hears it, and she is horrified of him. Like, he is going to just do awful things to her if they got married. He wasn't telling the truth. He was just angry. And so he doesn't get to tell the, the brother that he wasn't serious. And so she thinks that he's this monster. And what happens is he gets up, he leaves, right? And because they realize he's a laird of the other clan, so they let him go. And she gets kidnapped by his brother. And because his brother sees her, because she gets banished somewhere. Like, so much happens in these plots. They're so crazy. She gets banished by her family and goes somewhere. She is kidnapped by the brother because the brother sees her and is like, I want you. She's kept in his room for like a week before the original Laird sees her and is like, that's my woman. And she is like, oh my god, it's you. And she's horrified of him. So they're definitely from feuding clans though. And then there's, of course, a marriage of convenience because they have to combine the clans. So fun, but very annoying at the same time because of some of the not so smart decisions some of the characters make just to drive the plot. But... I had a fun time and I'm excited to dig more into Joanna Lindsay's backlist. Someone asked for a BIPOC rep that is less popular because I feel like we do see the same like Beverly Jenkins and Diana Quincy, whom I love, but I'm gonna recommend another Sapna Bog that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about, and that is To Covet a Countess, which is book two. Our heroine is actually from India and she flees India with her sister because there is a man there who is British who is determined to take her for himself and she is horrified of what could happen because of that and what could happen to her sister so they flee and they're trying to find their cousin who is the heroine from book one they know she's a duchess now and so they're trying to like climb her fence because they aren't let in and our hero is best friends with the duke who is married to their cousin and he is like what are you doing? And so she, he stops them. He realizes who they are and offers for them to stay at his house until the cousin comes back into town because they're actually out of town. And they end up falling for each other. And he's supposed to help her come out in society and find a husband then because the cousin is, once she comes, she's like, oh my gosh, I'd love to help you. Like, your family, of course I want to help you. And so they grow closer. The hero does have to grovel at the end because he does make a bit of a mistake in something that was horrifying. But it got a little slow in the middle, but something happened that 
but I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so invested in this plot again. I had so much fun reading this. Highly recommend, like I said, checking out this author. Someone asked for Marriage in Trouble, and I'm going to recommend The Devil's Submission by Nicola Davidson. Nicola Davidson writes very short and steamy historical romances, and this one, the heroine has not seen her husband in a long time. The mother is a, like debutante trainer like she educates girls and how to like come out in society and so she's like you're embarrassing because everyone knows your marriage is crumbling and I believe she's also a curvy heroine so her mom makes comments about that and so the heroine's like fine you know what I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get my husband and so she approaches her husband and is like I'm here and you're gonna be my husband in public and in society and the hero is actually really into BDSM stuff and so the heroine is like because they own a club like this whole series revolves around the club that they own and so she decides that she is going to learn what he needs in order to be a better wife so it is so good like I said it's pretty short my hoopla had all the audiobooks for this series so I listened to them through hoopla definitely recommend checking them out but this one is a marriage and trouble one in that series then we have mistaken identity and I'm going to recommend one of my favorites and that is if the duke demands by Anna Harry this has mistaken identity because in the beginning it's again like the wrong brother trope the wrong sibling she's in love with one of the brothers that grew up next door to her they are a titled family from a duke family and she is not she lived like on the farm next door but she grew up with them she's in love with the brother and so she decides at a masquerade she's going to seduce him she goes and visits his rooms, finds him, starts seducing him, and the other brother is, like, kind of into it, but it's the wrong brother. And so then they take off their masks and realize who it is, and she's horrified. She's like, oh my gosh. And this is also trying to find the other one a suitable partner, because he is like, I made an embarrassment of myself when my father died. I wasn't there for him. I need to take this dukedom seriously. I need to find a duchess. And he's like, if you help me find a duchess, I will help you get my brother. So they're trying to help each other get other people after a mistaken identity incident and now they're falling in love. I had so much fun. I need to read more from Anna Harrington. I really enjoy her books. Then someone asked for a romance with like nice parents where it's not like an overbearing mother or someone who's willing to like ruin their daughters to like get married. I have one that has a very unique family situation and so that is The Devil's Own Duke by Lenora Bell. Our heroine's mother passed away but her father is so funny because he does not want the dukedom. He is supposed to inherit this dukedom because like relatives passed away and he doesn't want to. He's actually in love with his mistress and wants to get married to her. Her. So it opens up with them at a ball and the dad has to pick a wife and she is trying to help him She actually runs the family's vineyards and she's very passionate about that and This guy shows up and he's like hey I'm the rightful heir. I was a secret baby. All this happened and she is super suspicious of it. She's like, there is no way and So she doesn't get along with him at first. The dad though is like, yeah, cool, take the dukedom from me. And so the dad is like all on board for this guy who came in to take the dukedom so he can be with the woman he loves. And so I think it's so funny how there's that kind of relationship going on and how we have a father figure who like does not want to be high in society. I thought that was so fun. So definitely a really interesting family dynamic in here with parents that I thought would be a good recommendation for that trope. Then we have a possessive and overprotective hero. And for that one, I'm gonna go with Olivia and the Mass Duke by Grace Calloway. This one is is so good and I need to read book two. So in this one, our heroine, Olivia, she has been in love with her, I think he's friends with her father for a long time. He is a widower, so his wife had passed away and it's a very tumultuous relationship they had. So he has a lot of trust issues. So Olivia finally decides, I'm a woman, I'm gonna seduce him. And so she does. And they end up falling for each other, but Olivia decides to enter the spy ring of Charlie's Angels, and they are spies. And so she goes to parties in disguise. He always recognizes her, and he is like, what are you doing? Stop putting yourself in danger. You need to listen to me. So he is super alpha overprotective of her and he's a lot older than her, and it was just so good. We have the scene of when she first fell in love with him, when he saved her life, when she was younger, and she tries to explore more, like, why he is the way he is with what was going on with his previous relationship and his marriage, but I love this book so, so much, and I'm excited to read more from Grace Calloway because... This was good, and book three is coming out in the series soon, so I'm hopefully going to read book two for the readathon. Then we have Forced Proximity, and I'm going to recommend A Rogue to Remember by Emily Sullivan. I recently read this. It does have a spy character in it as well. I do love spy romances, and so in this one, our heroine is hiding out in Italy, and she doesn't want to get married, so she's trying to have this, like, scandalous reputation, but her uncle wants her to come home, and her uncle actually runs this, like, spy ring that her hero works for, and he is tasked in taking her home. She agrees, and they were also childhood lovers. Like, they had a little 
whole thing going on when they were children. They were ripped apart. And so she, they kind of had a little animosity now because like they weren't allowed to be together when they were younger. And so what happens is she says yes, as long as I can continue my tour of Italy. So they go around Italy together and there's a lot of forced proximity because they're traveling and they stay together in places. And then when they finally get home, there's a lot of secrets about the spy stuff going on and who she's supposed to marry. And I had a really fun time with this and I really enjoyed watching them being able to travel. It's a really unique setting. Definitely forced proximity with a traveling setting. So when asked for a pirate romance and I have a pirate's pleasure by Heather Graham, this was so much fun. Our heroine is betrothed to someone, but then she's kidnapped by a pirate on the way there and she falls for the pirate, but then she is returned to her fiance and kind of starts falling for him. But then she's like, oh my gosh, I can't stop thinking about this pirate that infuriates me, but had kidnapped me and that I can't stop thinking about. And so it's a bit of a love triangle and crazy things happen. It's a definitely an old school historical romance, but this is what I want out of a pirate romance, which is so much hijinks and adventure and crazy plot. It's a lot of fun. You should pick it up. Someone had a Highlander romance, so I'm going to recommend The Wrong Bride by Gail Callan. This was a lot of fun because our heroine has the same name as her cousin, and this Laird of a clan is engaged to her cousin, but her aunt and uncle are not letting her go get married, and they want to break the contract, so the hero, who is the Laird, comes to take her by force and takes our heroine. And he's like, well, aren't you this person? She's like, well, yeah, but that's not me. And he's like, you're lying to me. And so they have to travel together back to his, where his land is, where his clan is. And they slowly start falling for each other. And then she's still Adama though. She's like, this is not me. I'm not who you're supposed to marry. And it turns out she was put in like her cousin's room on purpose for certain reasons. And she actually helps though him um, understand certain things that were going on with his family and come to terms with them because people were kind of resentful towards him because of something his father did. It. I had so much fun reading this book. I'm excited to read more from this author, and it's definitely a good Highlander romance you should check out. We have House Party, which is one of my favorites, and someone who does this trope really well is Joanna Shoup. I know tons of people have read this, but if you have not, read The Lady Gets Lucky, because they are at a house party, and our heroine wants lessons in seduction, approaches Kit, who has already had some moments with some chaperones at the house party. He wants to open his own supper club, and so the heroine is actually a chef, and she is very close with wealthy chefs, and she offers to get recipes for him if he gives her lessons in seduction. And it is so good because I spend the rest of the house party having their lessons in seduction, and I really enjoy this book, and I just think Joanna Shoup did this trope so well. Then we have Reclusive Hero, which you all know that one of my favorites is My Darling Duke, but that's not the one I'm recommending. I'm recommending To Beguile a Beast by Elizabeth Hoyt. He is a scarred Reclusive Duke, and our heroine is running away from someone with her two children, and is offered a job to work there. So she knocks on the door, and he opens it, and he's like, who are you? And she was sent there by someone that he trusts, so he's like, okay, I guess you can be my maid. And they have their romance, and it was super sweet. I really enjoyed this one. We slowly unravel who she's running away from and they slowly fall in love. I just really enjoy the kind of Beauty and the Beast trope that this one had and I love a scarred hero and definitely a reclusive hero as well which is what our hero is and I definitely need to read more Elizabeth Hoyt. Someone asked for an amnesia romance and I'm going to recommend Someone to Watch Over Me by Lisa Kleypas. This one I feel like is one of her underrated ones. Not a lot of people read it. I think it's book one in the Bow Street Runner series. I don't remember what book it is. Maybe it's not book one but in this one our hero works for Bow Street. Our heroine has no memory of who she is and she's a very famous courtesan and so the hero actually has some experience with her and she is like I don't understand who I am and she's kind of like wow I was in the line of sex work like I don't know how that happened because she feels like she is from like higher part in society and so it was very fun read and he has to protect her and uncover like what happened to her. I read this like two years ago so it's been a while since I've read it but I remember loving this as an amnesia romance and wanting to read many more of that genre. Then we have a non-titled hero and I'm gonna go with Scoundrel of My Heart by Lorraine Heath. This one is so good because our heroine and hero really fall in love. It's actually her best friend's brother and they start falling for each other but there is a stipulation that she can inherit this house that she really really loves but she needs to get married to a titled man and so she ends up earning the affections of a duke because he put out an ad in the papers and she applied and she is like front runner for being this duchess and so she's being courted by a duke but she's slowly falling in love with him and he wants to open his own club and it's really 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 good i really liked it especially because he wants the best for her and knows what she really wants is this house and he can't get that for her and it's just very angsty 
Lorraine Heath does no wrong. Someone asked for a neurodivergent character like the Madness of Lord Ian McKenzie, and I'm gonna recommend The Spinster and the Rake by Eva Devon. The hero's neurodivergent. He is not understood by society whatsoever. I believe he's a duke. Yes, they call him the Icy Duke of Thornfield, and he just likes to keep relationships very physical and not emotional and get attached, but he comes into his library. He had to change clothes because these women always throw themselves at him, and he ended up getting, like, all muddy, so now he's in servant's clothes, and he goes into his library and sees someone reading in his library and he's like what are you doing here she thinks he's a servant and so he threatens to kiss her if she doesn't leave she doesn't leave he kisses her they get caught and they have to get married so it's also marriage of convenience and she is so patient with him and just really wants to understand him and really falls in love with him and I really loved this book and how a lot of people really don't give him the time of day to understand who he is and why he doesn't get social situations like everyone else does and act in social situations but this is such a good one and I'm excited as well to read more from this author. Then we have The Dark Romance is the last one. I actually have a whole video of my favorite dark historical romances which I can link down below but this one I'm going to recommend Lord of Wicked Intentions by Lorraine Heath. This is book three in that series I was talking about where the three brothers had to run away and had very hard upbringings. This hero is definitely the most closed off. He is the most hardened hero and really pushes people away, but he sees our heroine being auctioned off by her kind of husband. Her dad passed away and left her to his friend who like kind of married her but now he's like I don't want you anymore so I'm gonna auction you off and she thinks it's to get married but it's really to be a mistress and she's horrified and the hero sees her and buys her and takes her home with him and he is someone who went through very very dark things in his past. So they end up falling in love and it's great. I really love the series. Lorraine Heath has a lot darker historicals and if you want more check out that video. And those are all my recommendations for tropes you needed recommendation for. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any other recommendations for me and what your favorite historical romance tropes are. I would love to hear. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.